Earth, our pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. Just 8,000 miles across. The Earth is so small, light could travel around it seven and a half times in just one second. Earth has a single moon, Luna, orbiting at a distance of a little under 240,000 miles. At this distance, light takes just over one second to travel to the moon. Earth is an inner planet of our sun, Sol, which is about 93 million miles away. It takes light a little over eight minutes to travel from Sol to Earth. Sol has four rocky inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. There could have been a fifth inner planet, but Jupiter's massive gravitational influence continuously disrupts its formation. In its place, is a ring of asteroids, the rocky debris of a would-be fifth inner planet. Sol also has four outer planets, all of which are gas giants. They are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. Neptune is Sol's most distant planet, 30 times as far from Sol as Earth. It takes light about four hours travel from Sol to Neptune. Beyond Neptune is a band of icy objects known as the Kuiper Belt. One of these objects, named Pluto, was once considered a planet itself. But in 2006, astronomers realized that Pluto is actually just one of many smaller objects now known as dwarf planets. The planets orbit the Sun in a plane this means they cross the night sky along a single line called the ecliptic. If you have trouble finding the ecliptic, pay attention to the path of the sun during the day. The sun and the moon also follow the same path in the sky as the planets. Sol's closest stellar neighbors are the three stars in the Alpha Centauri system. Proxima Centauri is the closest of the three. Light from Proxima Centauri takes a little over four years to reach Earth. Traveling to Proxima Centauri would be like traveling to Neptune about 9,000 times. Stars in the galaxy aren't evenly spaced. They gather together in the pinwheel-like arms that form the familiar spiral of the Milky Way. Sol is located about half the way out from the center of the Milky Way on the Orion arm of the spiral. Many familiar stars close to the constellation Orion are nearby, relatively speaking, in the Orion arm. Betelgeuse and Rigel, Sirius the dog star, the stars of Orion's belt, the Orion nebula, the Pleiades, and Polaris, the north star, all inhabit the Orion arm. It takes around 100,000 years for light to travel from one edge of the Milky Way to the other. There are around 200 billion stars in the Milky Way. Every single star you see at night with your naked eye is located in the Milky Way galaxy. At the center of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole which has a mass of about 4 million times that of Sol. The Milky Way galaxy is a member of a group of galaxies called the Local Group. There are around 80 galaxies in the Local Group, most of which are dwarf galaxies. In the distant future, the expansion of the universe will cause everything outside the local group to vanish into an unreachable, unseeable distance. The two largest galaxies in the local group are the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy. Light takes about 2.5 million years to travel between the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy. Despite being home to around one trillion stars, only the tiniest amount of light from its bright core can be seen with the naked eye. If you could see all of Andromeda in the night sky, it would be larger than the moon. The local group belongs to an older association of galaxy groups and clusters called the Virgo Supercluster. The largest galaxy cluster in the Virgo Supercluster is the Virgo Cluster itself. It takes light about 65 million years to travel to Sol from the Virgo Cluster. The Virgo Cluster can be found in the night sky, just between the constellations Virgo and Leo the Lion. The individual galaxies in the cluster aren't visible to the naked eye. 
but a pair of strong binoculars or a small telescope will reveal some of its over 2,000 residents. Light reaching us today from this group of galaxies started its journey around the time that a massive asteroid collided with Earth, bringing an end to the age of the dinosaurs. Many of the most stunning pictures taken by the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes are images of galaxy clusters similar to the Virgo Cluster. In the 1970s, astronomers discovered that the local group, the Virgo Cluster itself, and everything else in the Virgo Supercluster are headed for something much more massive. This object was dubbed the Great Attractor. Unfortunately, the location of the Great Attractor is obscured by the center of our own Milky Way, so no one knows exactly what's there. In 2014, it was determined that the Great Attractor is the gravitational center of a much larger galaxy cluster now named Laniakea, which in Hawaiian means immense heaven. It takes light about 500 million years to travel across the Laniakea supercluster. Galaxy superclusters aren't randomly distributed in space. They follow along web-like lines called galaxy filaments. Galaxy filaments are the largest known structures in the universe. Not everything in the universe can be observed from Earth or any point in space. The universe is expanding. This means that the farther away an object is from Earth, the faster more space is being created in between. At a certain distance, the amount of new space that will be created between Earth and a distant object over time will mean that signals from that object would need to travel faster than the speed of light to reach Earth. As objects pass through this roughly ball-shaped distance from Earth, they leave the part of the universe observable from Earth forever. The radius of the observable universe is estimated to be about 46.5 billion light years. Traveling across the observable universe would be like traveling to Neptune about 217 trillion times. Our small blue planet is just one tiny resident of a vast and ever-expanding universe filled with wonders and mysteries we are only just beginning to unravel. <laughs>